Hello, and welcome back to Leaf Blower Revolution. So what happened was I was making an update for the patch 2.14, and I realized I never covered the patch 2.13. I think that's because it happened, like, right on top of the season. And for some reason, I remember at the beginning of July, I had so many things going on that it must have slipped my mind. That said, uh, for completeness, we're going to cover patch 2.13 and 2.14 in a separate video. So first, dear leaf blowers, update time is best time. Version 2.13.0 comes with more content, i.e. a whole new galaxy, more QOL features, more bug fixes, and last but not least, guilds. Did we just skip a whole version number, version 2.12? Yes, we did. I just realized that, but it's too late now. I hope you don't mind as much... If you do, react with the cursed cheese. So I, of course, reacted with the cursed cheese, skipping version numbers. That's a terrible thing to do. But that's me, and that's also because I'm very meticulous about things like this. This would bother me tremendously. Uh, change log. There's a new galaxy, new areas, new leaf type, new crafted leaf tier and properties, new shop, new supporter perks, new game mechanic damage type, enemy stats, D-pad added. I don't know what that means. A uh, new converter. Again, I don't know what the converter is either. New skins. Salvage notification can be toggled. Dialogue crash fix. The cursed cheese pet fixed. I don't know how the cursed cheese fe pet was broken, but it's fixed now. So, in the pyramid, there's some new upgrades. We're going to talk about those. Uh, there's less pyramid enemies. It's in the ancient shop, the gem shop. And it's a supporter perk. That's why, I can, that's why I got my pyramid down to 15 enemies. You Basically, each one is five. Um, transforming sharded properties will lose all shards from the selected property. Again, I don't know really how that's relevant for Pyramid Plus. It's much more a sacred nebula, nebula thing. You won't even be able to make transformation shards until you get pretty far into sacred nebula. So I think that's a little out of line where that's at. Warning text added when trying to transform a sharded property. Again, I don't understand why either of those are under a pyramid plus. Maybe I'm missing something. If I am, please say something in the comments. From my exper experience, the only time I could transform a property was once I made it to the hematite leaves, which I was well into Sacred Nebula at that point. And now Sacred Nebula, they added the electric shop. I, I or sorry, the, the new shop, the electric energy, excuse me. I, I didn't realize that was added Again, because I, I at this point, I was still uh, trying to get to Pyramid negative 100. They, I basically was working on getting my uh, Tower 4. Though, and I was doing it the long way. I was, I was climbing to 2,400. I was experiencing lag while doing this, so I didn't know why that wasn't working. And it turns out, like like I explained in another video, just setting your options a certain way where you remove, uh, basically not drawing the equipment and not drawing the resource text and not drawing the leaf reward text. Not, turning those three things off fixed the problem. So, and unfortunately, it took me much longer to climb the 24,000 tower floors than it should have. But that's fine. That's in the past, which is okay. This is also the patch that added the Energy Belt Plus. Now, I haven't made it to the Energy Belt. Um, I have an idea of what's past this, um, but I haven't been there. Energy Belt Plus, an electrifying new adventure awaits. A separate channel will be created soon. The channel does exist in the Discord at this time. So there's a new leaf type and shop, and it's the Plasma Leaf. Um, these leaves have different physics and require a certain speed to be blown out of bounds. Uh, from, from what I've seen is you use the gravity ball, you get them, and they kind of spiral around you, and then you run, and then you smoothly move your character to the corner of the screen, and when you do that, they basically spin out and, uh, spin out from you. That's how I, I've seen it work, so it's, it is a very different mechanic. Oh, new converter, plasma leaves to energy. Okay, that's the converter. Okay. New gem upgrade, safe energy converter. The purpose of the safe energy converter is to make it so that you... Never convert to, to electrical energy when you when you can't store it. Without without that gem upgrade, you could sit there and convert all your plasma leaves and basically be capped at energy. New fu fusible leaf available after fulfilling the energy shrine property. Now I do know this leaf is the plasma leaf. You basically fuse four sorry four 
six hemi leaves into a plasma leaf. Yeah, it's quite the uh, uh, fusing option uh, operation there. And again, you get targeted transformation of properties after you fulfill the energy shrine property. So those are actually huge for crafting. Uh, as you know, the crafting in this game really begins after you MLC, and it and it doesn't end until you get through the energy shrine shrine property. Now I do have. I'll tell you. Crafting has not been my favorite feature of the game. Uh, it, it's not as idle as I would like. It re requires, to me, a lot more active play than an idle game ideally would. So I have like a love-hate with the crafting in this game. That said, like at least where I'm at now, it's at a point where it's very easy to automate. So I don't have to do as much. In fact, right now I'm just farming the witch over and over again. Uh, it wasn't always that way. I would say the worst part is when you're getting into the pyramid and working your, working your, um, what, what's it called? Your trade, your trade global multiplier because you need the cheese and you have to get trade global multiplier to get the cheese and it, it becomes kind of tedious and it's, it's, you really have to kind of upgrade your leaves as you go to get it. You kind of have the same problem with um, when you start doing the uh, fusion of leaves. But with the cards, the cards have really changed it. So you basically can just get away with AFK farming the witch a lot more, which I think is much better. It used to be you'd have to farm the witch and farm four of the bosses because you had to get the shards. And I had a very hard time getting enough shards to keep feeding all the fusions I needed to do while still trying to prioritize farming the witch as much as possible. Thankfully, like with the cards, they kind of ended that. You can basically get tons of shards very easily. And then you can just focus on uh, getting, just getting the, um, the, the dark essence. I do think they need to do something about dark essence because the amount of dark essence you need is... Uh, a little excessive, but that's beyond the scope of a patch video. That said, the, the, the next feature, now I didn't get all of the guild patch notes in here. I will read the last few, but it was already really long, so I just wanted to add this. Plus, we've already kind of done the season, so guilds are irrelevant right now. But let's go over them anyways, because I'm sure there'll be a feature whenever season six rolls around. Guilds are exclusive to online seasons only. More info about the next season will be posted in a separate announcement. To get you more excited about guilds, here's how they'll work. Guild resources take honor. Honor basically is a daily reward of defeating area bosses. Now, from my experience, uh, getting honor from defeating area bosses, I had a success rate of about uh, 5%. So even when I unlocked the witch, there's there was no way for me to farm the witch enough to actually max out my contributions to the guild. I do believe you probably need to at least be in Sacred Nebula for that. So it's quite a bit away. Now, how much cards will change this going forward will be interesting to see. Uh, but I don't, I, I can't say off the top of my head how much it will, cards will actually change things. I do know they do give you a good amount of damage. So the fact that they do give you a good amount of damage should make it a lot quicker to get to pyramid uh, pyramid negative 100 specifically so that could be interesting to actually get you to sacred nebula sooner and again with the extra damage you'll be able to farm the sacred nebula bosses quicker and farming those bosses quicker that that opens up a lot of things in my opinion so that could be a big change uh, that said everyone can create or join guilds which cost some honor I believe they remove the honor requirement later let me, let me just verify that. It's in one of the future past, you know, it's... Actually, I don't know. I guess you still have to and uh, uh, join with honor. And guild owners will not be able to leave their guild, but we can kick. So once I made my guild, it was basically set in stone that I would not be able to leave it, and that, that I would basically not be joining any guild at any time in the future. I, of course, was fine with that because, you know, initially I, I didn't realize guilds were capped at eight members, 
And I was thinking, well, everybody can just join from my channel, and that ended up not being the case. That said, it, in Season 6, I will be handling guilds a little differently. I have to see what a private guild is and how that works. Uh, guilds can be upgraded by Investing Honor. Yeah, that was, that was uh, pretty straightforward. And the investment count is capped depending on the season. Oh, okay. Yeah, so when we went into this season, you were allowed to make eight investments, no, sorry, ten investments a day of up to 25 honor, which gave 75 XP, I think. It, I might be a little fuzzy on the details. But that was, that, to me, that was, I, I, I do feel like a cap is good. I thought that the cap that they started with was not good. Basically, the, I would much rather have the cap work differently. Uh, instead of a total amount of investments per day, I'd rather it be like a maximum amount of XP a day. It kind of... It, the way it, it's designed, it forces you to min-max into me a very stringent way and it means that everybody on your in your group has to be on the same page because if you can only do eight investments a day and the biggest investment was like 25 honor for 75 xp if you did a bunch of one honor for three xp you could do eight of those okay and that that would give you with eight honor for 24 xp which was terrible when you consider you could do eight of the 25 honor for uh, 75 XP. Obviously, I never got even close to being able to max my honor contribution to the guild in a day. That, that again, was more about how limited I was being basically... Basically, to optimize the guild, you need to at least get to Sacred Nebula. If you're not in Sacred Nebula, you just simply won't get enough. And even when you get to Sacred Nebula, this then requires that you spend your time cycling through four of the bosses. Now... I would hope that cards might augment honor, but I wouldn't count on it. I wouldn't really... I, I, it would be nice to increase the honor drop rate, but I don't know that we'll ever see any of that. And, and of course, the higher your guild level is, the better the bonuses were. The bonuses were pretty good. Uh, it was actually... I think the Leaf Sension bonus was so good that he nerfed the salvage you got for salvaging your Leaf Sensions. That said, I, I, since I didn't make it into Sacred Nebula, I wasn't doing any Leaf Sensions, so I kind of, I kind of screwed myself in that respect. Uh, guild upgrades are applied automatically. Yeah, that was pretty straightforward. Certain guild upgrades are unlocked after reaching a higher guild level. For example, there plus one pet at guild level ten. We did actually hit guild level ten. I, I didn't do terrible at the guild level, uh, especially considering we weren't really coordinated. I think we did pretty well. And additionally, if you could actually manage to get, so you could, you could do up to eight contributions of 25 XP, and you could actually, or sorry, 25 honor, which was 75 XP for each contribution. So if you could actually get 200 honor a day, you could actually turn your excess honor into season gems. I was really excited by this, thought this would be great. I was unable to do it. You basically have to farm so many bosses to get the, because the drop rates are just so, so low. That said, outside of that, there was a fix for electrical energy, max storage count fix. He obfuscated the converter for plasma leaves to electrical energy in the shop. Uh, th then he added, later, he added three new upgrades in the plasma shop. Uh, relic damage multiplier crafting property value was increased by ten times as much. And it was applied, and you had to basically uh, craft a new leaf or re-roll it to get that effect. And potential fix for crafting properties of... There apparently was a menu crash. I didn't experience that. And finally, the guilds were able to be set to private uh, two days after the season began. And they were also... Members were kick protected for 24 hours if they had invested in the guild. So that was a change because I guess people would make their guilds public, let people join, then kick them. Especially at the start of the season. Like you would invest all your honor and then you would get kicked. And then you couldn't even join another guild, and you basically burned up all your honor for the day. So that was kind of the summary of 213. I thought it was a pretty good patch overall. I did like the guild dynamic. However, I think guilds do need a, a, a little bit more restriction. The issue I had with guilds specifically involved the fact that 
there was no federation between free-to-play players and um, supporter players. So if you bought if you bought the DLC or not. The issue is that if you're a free-to-play player and you were trying to get on the leaderboard, your best bet was to join a guild with seven players that were on the uh, supporter leaderboard. Simply because supporters would be able to get further in the game faster, and the faster the supporters got into the game, the basically they, they would it would allow them to basically kind of power level you with the power of the guild. And it, I think it gave an unfair advantage to people in the that were legitimately free to play and free to play guilds. That said, you know I do understand the benefit of coordination, so I don't want to undercut that. But I do strongly feel that they should federate guilds in the future to be guilds that are started with somebody who has claim the supporter perks that only people other people that have claimed the supporter perks can join that guild and free-to-play guilds should only be able to join by other free-to-play players i think that would make it a little more fair to people on the free-to-play side uh, i don't think it matters much for the uh, supporter side so if the supporter side adds a free-to-play player it's technically nerfing the supporter side so it's not benefiting them in any way because obviously free-to-play is going to progress slower but like I said, uh, on the other side of the coin, the free-to-play player, if he's in a guild with seven supporters and they get, and you know, it's seven serious contenders, they can get much bigger guild bonuses than if he was in a free-to-play guild. So that's why I feel like they should have been federated. That said, like I said, like to me, I would rather have an XP cap than a contribution cap. So if it's going to be eight contributions and the max contribution you make is 25 honor, I would much rather have an honor cap per person of just, you know, you can donate up to 200 honor per day. That's, that to me, that to me is important just to minimize the, or sorry, I think it was 10 contributions. I don't know. I, I think it was 80. I think it was uh, 10 contributions per person with a max of eight players in the guild. Personally, I would rather to see it l less stringent like that. I would rather have an honor cap per person and an honor cap for the guild and i would like to see the honor cap for the guild lower than if everybody can did their max contribution so what i mean by that for instance let's say that everybody can contribute up to so it was let's say let's go with how the seasons with 250 honor and as a guild could have eight players basically you could, you could con contribute 2000 honor across everybody in a day well in that case rather than have the guild limited to like eight people i'd rather have the guild be able to open up to 16 people okay so that means but the caps would still be into effect so at most one person could still only contribute 250 honor a day however because there's more people in the guild they had the 2000 honor cap is a little bit easier to reach plus i didn't like how i felt like it was Eight people is a little limited for a guild. I'd like to see it a little bit bigger. Uh, but again, I mean, you could rework this the other way too, right? You could make it so it's it's 250 honor. And instead, the max contribution is something like 1,250 honor a day. So you're basically saying five people have to contribute the max to get the most progression. I do feel like there needs to be some kind of constraint so it's not... All eight people have to contribute the maximum amount of honor to maximum, maximally progress the guild. I think there needs to be some kind of tweak to that. And, and, and when I say some kind of tweak, I mean people should be able to over-contribute and the guild cap should be lower. I think that would be better overall and it, I think it would make guilds still useful, but it would also make, in my opinion, the season more competitive so you could have really a really small guild with a lot of really competitive people and they could still reach the cap. Or you could have a larger guild with less competitive people and they could still reach the cap and that way guilds while being giving you a bonus to the season aren't so deterministic in, to, in who wins that said obviously even uh, even with all this being in a good guild doesn't mean you're going to get first place because you still have to beat your your seven other guildmates and we saw that that zephyr beat uh, his other guildmate kevin i can't say kevin's name but kevin you know he did actually get second place but because zephyr already had a leaf he did get his leaf so eh, it's a toss-up i do think it's a good i do think overall though guilds are a positive to the seasons 
because they do en encourage coordination between players, and I think that's paramount in making the game more fun to play. That said, once again, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to support the channel. If you have any questions, please say something in the comments. I do always look forward to your questions. And as always, thank you again, and I hope you have a great day.